Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe, bringing you another review today as we look at action platforming game Infernax on Steam. The big inspiration for this game seems to be Castlevania 2 all the way back on the regular Nintendo, but you do have the DNA of other Nintendo games in here as well, such as Zelda 2. Infernax puts you in control of Alcidor, who is on a quest to stop the unholy magic that is spreading his lands in order to restore peace. But actually, you'll make a lot of choices in this game as to what kind of character you truly are on the inside. While this isn't the most in-depth or original story you'll come across, thematically I liked a lot of the subject matter here, I think the writing is fine. Again, and presented in a Nintendo style. Overall, it's rather dark, it's brooding, and if you were a fan of the Castlevania series, the older ones in particular, you'll get a kick out of what they've done here. Gameplay also harkens back to the good old days on the Nintendo. You have a standard whip attack to deal with all the creepy monsters that get in your way. You have a lot of platforming to deal with here, and luckily the jumping feels pretty good for the most part, I would say. Infernax is a fairly open map as well, so you don't have to progress through it in any particular order necessarily, you will need certain abilities to unlock certain paths, but overall you're actually kind of left to your own devices and you can go off the beaten path and tackle this game in a variety of different ways. I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with these Metroidvania elements. On one hand, I did enjoy the freedom of exploration to a degree, but it was frustrating when I hit a rock wall and I just didn't know exactly where to go or I would need a certain ability because the jump was just out of reach. That did lead to a lot of wandering and backtracking because the map in this game is not all that great. One thing I did really like in Infernax is the day-night cycle, which is a callback to Castlevania 2. Monsters will get far more difficult at night, and then during the day things will calm down a bit. It does change the game in some pretty interesting ways that I won't spoil. You'll gain experience off of all of the monsters that you defeat, as well as gold randomly from time to time that you can spend to get new equipment, like armor, and you can also unlock some spells along the way as well. The experience system is pretty simple as you hit save points in this game, you can spend those experience points to get stronger or perhaps to raise your health or even your mana. Perhaps the most interesting gameplay element of all in Infernax for me anyways was the choices that you make. You can spare or slay certain enemies or non-playable characters that you come across in your journeys and this does have a direct impact on things. You might not get certain items because you killed someone's husband or you might steal from the church and that could really give you a bad name. I thought it was a really cool system and it does add some incentive to go back and play through the game and see what some of the other choices will lead to. Infernix is a very difficult game on the classic mode which was the intended difficulty of this game but thankfully you have options here. There is a casual mode which I gravitated towards eventually as I did find the classic mode just a hair too tough for me personally. That casual mode will give you more save points in important areas. You'll also be able to keep some of the gold and experience when you die and you'll have an extra life to help you as well. It's just a little bit more balanced and enjoyable in my opinion. The classic mode is certainly there for those of you that want that challenge though and you'll get it. Overall though everything feels pretty solid in this game. The gameplay works well. The platforming is fine, the combat is perfectly suitable for what they are making here, and it's a fun romp despite some of my frustrations in getting lost and wandering around which happened more often than I would have liked. There's also some really fun callback cheats that I won't entirely spoil here that you can unlock, so credit the developer for accessibility options. It is a game that anyone will be able to complete, it's just a matter of how you want to complete it. As far as visuals are concerned, I think this game nails what it's going for, that 8-bit aesthetic. It does look true to a Nintendo game almost exactly like one. It's fantastic actually. This game's very gory with some of its art. You might see eyeballs popping out, blood spewing all over the place. There's some gruesome bosses and monsters. Some great design and care went into them. Some of the villages are kind of samey looking from one another, but overall there's a good variety to dungeons, environments, that kind of thing. I love the pixel art here. It's really well done. And then the soundtrack, you guessed it, it sounds like a Nintendo game with some great hooks, some wonderful composition, 
musicians here actually. Very intricate and well-designed songs. I was humming along to a lot of them. They were always a treat and there's a good variety here as well. Each area does present a new song and I was always excited to hear what was coming next. All in all, Infernax is a bit of an 8-bit lover's dream. You have a great soundtrack here, you have some wonderful 8-bit style visuals, and the gameplay is sound and solid. I enjoyed the choice system which has you deciding whether you need to spare people or not. It did make me feel guilty a few times. I think the moment to moment platforming is perfectly fine, the combat gets the job done, and there's some cool abilities that you'll unlock that make it more and more interesting. So overall this one is well recommended for those of you that love 8-bit throwback games. Expect a little bit of wandering and frustration there, but still, it's a fun romp. It'll last you about 5-7 to seven hours for a playthrough, so an entertaining way to spend the weekend. Thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to pay tribute to our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Build C, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coil, Skepticism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS the Eighth, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Eric, PSC, King of the Hatch, Carmine Red, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, please head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.